The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman on this Thursday, the 20th of July. We're looking at the Dow up 207 to 35,269. We went to a leg D, and then a peak D at 34,588 on the 16th of June. Remember, in the Chapman, we were always looking for four higher peaks before we uh, considered that something else could happen. It could continue, it could turn around. That's really important. And on the 16th, it turned around sharply for a 1,000 points and then ran up again, peak A, peak B, peak C, and we just in leg D. And this leg D is extended for four sessions to higher highs. Uh, looking at the weekly chart, we've gotten to an E above that neckline that we were talking about at 34,712. That's really important, and I'd like to see this for about two weeks to hold above that 30. 4,700 level. That's going to be really important because it starts to improve that monthly tremendously. In fact, as we're speaking, the uh, oh, the MACD is just for the month. Well, we got we still got uh, almost two weeks to go. So, but for the month, it has turned up for the very first time since it crossed negative way back in about April of last year. And the stochastics at 77 percent. That's really helping. Looking at the S and P. We've got the S&P right now coming back from an earlier slide. It's still down about 10 points at 45.56. This is a leg E, and you see this little tiny doji candle right here at a, at a potential turnaround. I'm watching this closely, but here's the issue. The price is above the nine-period moving average. That's the green line in the daily chart on the left. The 9 is above the 14. All of that's fabulous technical. That's just showing, showing internal strength. The MACD is good. The stochastic's fabulous at 93%. The on-balance volume's a tad overbought. That's the daily. The weekly, gone to a G slash C. MACD's good, 9 over the 14. Everything is fabulous, 91%. In the stochastic, on balance volume is very overbought. Doesn't mean to say that's my only indicator that gives one of my only indicators that gives a really good signal to say start being a little careful. Looking at the uh, monthly chart, fabulous leg C4818 was the all time high, slumped to 3491, and here we are at 4555. It's a long way to go to get to uh, a new all time high. But so far, all the trajectory and the MACD is good, in, and the 9 is over the 14, and the stochastics at 72%. On balance volume, even in the monthly chart, is starting to get a little bit stretched to the upside. QQQ, I want to get these done because we've got a ton of stocks to look at. QQQ, uh, almost a doji candle yesterday. It's down 3.5 uh, at 382.19. Had a fantastic move, a really great percentage from the 254 low back in August. Uh, sorry, October of last year to the high of just the other day of 387, 130 points. That's uh, it's almost a double. It's really excellent, 40-something percent. Now what we're looking at is the, the weekly chart in the left side, right side price time match has gone nicely above, and that turns that whole area of three. At three, 372 to 362, that's kind of my, my support area that I'm looking at in July. If we do see weakness in the rest of July into early August, and the cup formation in the weekly in the monthly chart is really strong. 408 all-time high in the 11th, that's November of 2021. October of 2022, 254, that's quite a pullback. But the cup formation has got this all in gray leg A. I say gray, but actually I should... I'm waiting to see if the stochastic can get to, from 78% into 80%. And then I'm going to have to see, even though it's an A, it's giving a buy. Uh, at this point, it's got a buy signal, but it's not a buy mode. And that doesn't imply. Uh, that implies that you, so far I can't say it's going to go to a leg D. But it's fabulous action. Consider that it's gone to 387 when the all-time high was 408. 20, uh, 20, 30 points from the all-time high. Fabulous action. IWM was leading the way, then it suddenly stalled, and then yesterday it had a little doji candle at a recovery high just underneath the 190, I think it was 197. Let me just check exactly what it is. The high of of February of this year was one. 
99.26. So it went yesterday to 197.66. So it's just under that. Uh, that's usually like a magnet in the cup formation. So this is the area that you should start to see a little bit of stalling action. But the MACD is good. Nine's over the 14. Stochastic is 93%. Nothing technically. And one of the reasons why I said subscribers, we aren't going to short, but we do have one particular sector that we want to do nibble at a short position. We haven't got it yet because I wanted a bit of a bounce first before we go short. So we'll see. But everything else so far is acting extremely well. Uh, I wanted to go, I want to do this here. Gold is down uh, six at 1974. In leg D, just a fractional high above three days ago for a peak C. So I don't like a quick C to D and then a turnaround just barely above C. That says it's, it's not a, I've been talking about this for a while. I don't see this as a strong move to the upside. I see it as a really nice counter trend bounce. And so far, I'm calling it a bounce, even though we're actually long a goal in, a, in the goal position. But the stochastic is at 88%, and that tells me that there is support. I think it would be kind of stuck in a trading band, slightly higher highs, slightly higher lows. That's kind of the way I'm looking at it right now. Silver is a little different. Silver trading right now in leg D. Finally got to that leg D. It's down 10 cents at 25.28. Uh, the MACD is good. Stochastic is flat at 94%. On balance volume is lagging a little bit. So I think this is, this is much better. This is a really nice pattern in silver. But now I think it's getting close to a little bit of a stalling a digestive phase. We're looking at, let me do this quickly. I want to get this done so I can do all the charts that I've got. High grade copper trying to get back to the 200 period moving average uh, at uh, 3. Point, if I can ever read it, 3.90. Trading at 3.86, up 0.04. Uh, here's this trend line that I'm watching very closely in the weekly chart. Let me just do this if I can. I can tell. I'm just about to hear music. Okay. There we go. Extend it down. It's a little slow because I'm doing this all remotely. So far, I don't even want to talk about it. Look, bumping right up again, a falling exclamation, bumping up against resistance. I wouldn't be surprised if copper in September, October is actually trading in the 4.05, uh, 4. Uh, 10 area. That'll be really important. Uh, I wanted to do this. Oh, the dollar. DXY. Here we go. DXY, a little bit of a rally. It's up 20 ticks at 100.49. Uh, this particular weekly chart with a lowercase h that goes to lowercase m then takes out the left side low has just two weeks in which to get above, to close. It can't just get. It's got to close above a 100 point. Is that 48 or 100? 100.82. And it's trading right now at 100.49. You think these 0.20s and 0.30s, no big deal in the dollar. It's a big deal. It really struggles. EUR, USD. There we go. A euro dollar made a peak D in the daily chart, peak a leg D in the weekly chart, leg C in the monthly chart, USD, JPY. We're looking at, oops, here we are. This is the. Um, yeah. This wheat, thus wheat. Wheat is a very nice move stalled right at the 200 period moving average because soybeans, very nice move up into higher ranges. And look at corn. So the, the grains are moving very nicely. I'll be back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, what I'm looking at here is um, there's a really good chance that we start to see a little digestive uh, pattern coming into the different indices, starting off maybe with the semiconductors, SMHs, but the X, look, here's Goldman Sachs up 4.68 at 345.23. Legs see in the daily chart. Weekly chart has this Chapman falling X formation resistance at about the 347 level to Pierce uh, in the weekly chart. So that's good. But look, XLF, that's the financials, S&P select financials. Leg E right now, uh, the move is getting a little bit, starting to get a little strange, but everything here is technically good. The leg C in the weekly chart and a rectangle formation sees a pattern that if it makes higher highs and higher lows, there's a really good chance that it goes close to right on or just above the, the left side high. In this case, it's the high of this ugly bar of the 10th of uh, March that has a high of 36.25 and a low of 32.53 before it went all the way down to the 30 area. So that that so far is good. The weekly chart, the monthly chart needs a lot of work. And the uh, the weekly chart has 33s as very good support. Uh, we're also looking at the KRE, which is the regional banks. <clears throat> Pulling back a little bit, and that's telling me in the leg D, the last peak D, I saw a big pullback, and and that you remember 28 bars and then 56 bars, where I discussed in, in that particular technique that I developed called the the price volume climax low, that was made at 34.52 on the 4th of May, and the rule of thumb is that if it closes after 28 bars, nicely above the the last candles high bar, then it can go for 56 bars to higher highs, uh, that's recovery highs. And that's exactly what it's done here. There's 28, so this is around about 28 to about 56 right now. Uh, so, and a leg D, and I think it could start to pull back a little bit. It's good that the regional banks have started to move because you can't just have the money center banks moving by themselves. So, Bank of America is the one that we usually get under 30. This time we didn't get it under 30. It's trading at 31.58 right at the 200 period moving average. I'm really monitoring this closely because I think it could test the 31.20 to 20 uh, to 30 points. 56 ish area, uh, and then we'll see whether or not it's got the impetus to move above the close sharply for three weeks 
out of four weeks above the rectangle high. So, so far it's acting quite well. Now, here we go. So, PTRA, I'm going backwards. I'm sorry, I'll get my emails in a moment. I'm, I'm doing this all remotely. I just, yesterday when I did that, it seemed to freeze uh, my Skype. So, I, I don't want to mess around with that. The PTRA is up 17 cents at 170 in leg D. It made this beautiful cup formation. It even did one of those left side, right side price time matches, but it really soared above the left side high, uh, and that's kind of important. So PTRA, while I'm doing this, is uh, Proterra Inc. Proterra, is that uh, positive earth or something? I'm not sure what they do. I'm not going to be able to do that right now. So there's your left side, right side price time match, exact number of bars to the cup formation, pulls back, and then it makes the exact one day early, isn't that amazing? What a you know, technical analysis is just you're always surprised at the exactitude, the the way these patterns repeat over and over again. Look at that beautiful cup formation. It's a W actually, and uh, it's helping the weekly chart, which looks just horrible. But this time, it's the first time it's over the uh, 200 period, sorry, the 14 period moving average since it closed above there somewhere about uh, February of this year, uh, up in the uh, five and a half area. Oops, and now it's down at uh, 1.73, having touched, been almost at one. So, Proterra, yeah, I, I like it. And now the support is the left side lip, which is right there at peak C uh, at one point. 55 and it's trading at 1.73. I believe the 1.57 to 1.53-ish area should be good support. All right, here we go. So questions came in, so I'm going to ask them. Earlier, uh, about, I think it was a week ago, I said there's a good chance that Apple, even though it's uh, starting to digest gains, will eventually make that leg D, the missing leg D for a buy mode in the Chapman wave. And lo and behold, it went to a D yesterday at 198.23, pulling back today. So that's accomplished one of the things. All the technicals are really good in terms of price, the nine period moving average over the 14 period moving average, stochastic at 80%. But the MACD is weak and it's just potentially going to uh, deflect lower. I don't know. But in the meantime, we're looking at a new recovery high uh, going to an all-time high. So that was 194.48 at peak C where I put a question mark. I said one of my favorite patterns, the falling X formation, lower lows and lower highs and much lower lows. When you break out to the upside, you can go quite a bit higher and you look at each successively higher peak on the left to see how it can take it out. Well, it certainly took it out and it went to one, what did I say it was, 198 uh, something, 198.23. So that's accomplished. So at this particular point, now, I'm not saying it will, I'm just saying now, Apple could be ready for the digestive phase. doesn't have to, but it's a quick D to E in the weekly chart and a really strong, I don't know if this is a brand new A or it's a D, uh, because there was a chapter we've instant restart right here in the monthly chart, right there. So if, one, two, three, yep, that was an instant restart. And so often in the monthly charts, this has been happening for the last two years, we've seen that an instant restart eventually turns out to be needed because it becomes E slash A, F slash B and G slash C, and that very often goes to a D just above the previous highest, 182.94 back in January of 2022. So a little cautionary moment here, even though it's fantastic, it's almost at all-time highs. Let's go to the next one. Amazon, Amazon question came in. I'm um, sorry, I just can't, I haven't got the names of people, but Amazon came in. Uh, where do I see support in Amazon if it pulls back? And that's 132.73 down 263. Made a peak F with a little uh, a kind of a, a doji, little mini hammer. And right there with a high of 136.65, I'm going to type that in 136.65. 136.65. Right there. 65. And yes, here again, you can go into this rectangle formation right here as support no big deal 
It's had a spectacular move. Now I can take a bit of a rest. Peak C probably this week if there's no new recovery high by tomorrow. And a very strong leg B, that's Amazon. Uh, where do I see resistance? Well, resistance would be the next logical way to look at it is in the – certainly the weekly chart has a left side high of 136.49. So we've just taken that out. And then you can go to 130. No, it's one, 146.57, uh, the high of the week of the August the 19th. Uh, August the 19th would have been last year. So this is really good action so far. Next question came in. Microsoft. Wow, time to start. At least I'm getting all the stocks that I'm going to about. Microsoft, this is a, this looks like a right off extension with the dating chart sitting down from 50. I think Microsoft's going to have a little bit of a digestive phase right now. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Target Technicians out. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019 finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back. And one of the things I always talk about is there's a pattern that we look at. Uh, usually it occurs either at 8.30 or 10 o'clock when there's some, some economic news, certainly earlier in the day. And what happens is there's a sudden spike up, and then that fails, and it looks like the Eiffel Tower goes straight. I call it the Eiffel Tower with the single leg A up failure pattern. 
that's what we got in the 10 minute chart and I'm sorry I was busy uh, here doing doing the show I did not switch over to uh, my uh, e-mini chart which is a pity because it gave all the exact readings that we always look for so let me just show you here so if you go to this look at the how Remember I talked about in the different charts, we were looking at that exact price formation where I call it bar symmetry. It's the exact number of bars on the left side matches. The, no, it's the number of bars on the left side exactly matches the number of bars on the right side, so sometimes to the exact number of bars. But it could be very close. But look at this. I'm going to that level right here. So that's green on the way up. And here's your midpoint. We call it the plumb line right here. Oh, wait a minute. I moved it. I can move it to the left. One bar. There it is. That's your plumb line. I don't always see the plumb line. In this case, we did. And now I can move it to the left right there. And here's the right side. Move it to the left one there. Okay, so it missed it by two bars. That was the low right there at... 9.13 a.m. Eastern Time with a low of 45.79.25. It ran up to peak E with a cup formation. I, I would have done this live, but of course, I was doing the show and I, I'm only, I only have one monitor right now. Usually, I have many monitors. And look at this. The price, look at the MACD stochastic on-balance volume. Look how strong they were there. And look at the plumb line right there. Look at this. Failing MACD. Failing stochastic, on balance volume gave a top, did a little double top there and then turned down. But most importantly, this is exactly what we're seeing in the Dow. Fabulous move up. And look how many from this bar, it took 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 sessions, that's 13 minutes. It's a one minute bar on the E mini before it fails. Now, this is important, and that's the reason why I've had webinars. I've had, if you, if you subscribe to the opening call, you'll be able to get umpteen webinars talking about the power of the nine-period moving average over the 14, and look how long it took before it actually failed. It looks very quick in the 10-minute chart, but look at this. Now, let me go to this in real time. Here's the Dow. Uh, I'm going to skip Microsoft just for the moment because I like to do everything current. That's the only way we can get yeah, as an educational medium at TFNN. That's that's the way we do things live. And look, the nine is still expanding over the fourteen. The price is way above the stochastic. It, the MACD is very strong. Stochastic's fabulous at ninety-three percent. On balance volume in this particular chart is still lagging it gives it a little bit of wiggle room when i go to the chart that i show subscribers to my opening call every day and i have a little squash you can see the on balance volume looks a little bit overboard so it just depends on how uh, ex how much you expand the, the chart itself but in the meantime uh, what we are looking at is the selectivity that has been very important, the rotational aspect of this particular market to have something holding up really well while other things are failing, um, and then vice versa. When the, the, the others are overextended, they take a breather and something else comes along. That's what I was talking about in the financials. So uh, I wanted to show that chart, show how long it could take. It could take quite a while before the Dow starts to turn down. That's why I'm saying the, the end of July, going into the, the, the next couple of weeks, going into maybe the start of August, it's going to be so important because we are overextended in so many areas. I'll, I'll just keep going. Look, Microsoft is an example. Microsoft right now had that single leg A. Well, it's not A. It actually went to a B. But it could be an alternate count, F slash B at 366.78. This is where it's a little difficult in the Chapway methodology to decide, is this the turn? Is this the turn or is just a turn. Um, most of the time, the, the parameters and the techniques that we use are very clear. Look, the 9 is still over the 14. At some point, even if it goes down, it'll come back uh, a balance at least into the 344 uh, area. So we're maybe five points away from getting the perfect if you were wanting to short. But it's a fantastic company. It's made an all-time high. 
you've got to consider that money is still going to – this is profit-taking, but the pattern itself says this vicious move to the upside often – most of the time, look at the character of the stock. The stock tells you, this is my character. And my character is to move steadily. I, as earnings and everything are improving, I'm working steadily to the upside from the 220 area. I go all the way to the 360s in a very steady move. Look, walk in the nine-period moving average in the weekly chart. Monthly chart has gone to an alternate account, E slash B. Don't have to talk about that yet because it's the daily count that's going to give us the, the speedboat turn. And this turn says, that uh, at 74% of the stochastic unbalanced volume turning down um, the MACD is weaker, stronger than it strong, but much weaker than it was when it made the highs back at 351.47 in June. So this just says, be careful because this whole containment area here looks like it's that's where it wants to go. That's Microsoft. Next question came in. Could I look at uh, Apple? I just did Apple. So Apple hasn't started to pull back yet. Yeah, there it is, pulling back after the leg D yesterday. So we're watching this very closely. Uh, IBM, I believe IBM, done, they come out with earnings or something. There's another leg D, um, just slightly. Remember the root of thumb in the lopsided cup formation? The gravy cup I call it a rectangle. You can go just under, right on, or just above the previous high. And then you've got to monitor it closely because it could quite easily pull back and test the midpoint range of the rectangle. That would be at about 135, straightening right now to 138.98 of 3.50. And it's a leg B in the weekly chart. Uh, we're looking at next question came in. Of course, oh, now. I was going to do this yesterday. Talk about now. I'm late because I want you to do it yesterday, and it's not now. It is okay. So what? this is very interesting. It had a fabulous candle. This is ServiceNow Inc. Cloud Auto uh, Automated Management for Workflows, uh, IT Services, etc. There's your left side, right side price time match to the exact bar. How does that work? But that's what I chose. I chose to go from this candle, mid candle, the seventh of the week of the 7th of January of 2022 in the 600 area. I chose these candles right here as the highs, which is 601, 60, no, three, sorry, 601, three, Yeah, there it is. So it's, it's around about the 600 area, and I put this in as a midpoint. This is the fulcrum. This is the right here. This is the bottom line. Look at this. Just made it in that cluster of resistance level there. So when you're looking at all of these stocks, we are ready for some kind of a digestive phase, but we'll see if we swing over to the financials. I'll be back in a moment. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the market with confidence. 
Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I remember back, so uh, the other one is Roblox. Roblox is... Uh, uh, in the uh, this is the gaming area. Uh, it's just made a leg D, and today it's got a peak D because it's dropped sharply at 250. Look how many peak Ds we have here. So this is says be a little careful here. I'm not uh, such a subscriber. We're not adding anything right now. Uh, we were looking to try to get a short position, one short position. I got to be really careful that at this particular point, and I'm not being selectively. Um, um, I'm not looking at this as if it's a general market. There are some areas that are actually starting to uh, see some buying, and that's really important. So Roblox has a 40.50 uh, as a 200 period exponential moving average is trading at 42.32 right now. Just a little digestive phase. The monthly looks terrible. Weekly is improving quite a little bit. Um, ARKK. I think this is also really for a bit of a digestive phase. Let's see where we are. We had a doji candle, G slash C, yesterday. Um, this two dojis, sign and doji plus a doji yesterday. That just says to me, hey, be careful. All the technicals are all like the others. The, the 9 over the 14, the MACD, the stochastic at 87%. Nothing there says, whoa, go short everything. I'm just saying be careful right here. Maybe options is the best way to play this. Put options if you want to do anything on the short side. But all the technicals are good. I just think it's a little bit of a digestive phase off the spectacular move up. Uh, what was the other one? Oh, Shopify. Shop is looking at this right now. Where are we? Peak D. Yes, another peak D pulling back a little bit. Nothing uh, nothing negative in the chart other than to say the pattern has gone above a trend line, uh, a trend line that was resistance that became support just for a couple of days and now it's back to resistance. This just says to me that at 66.63 down to $1.62, a very quick uh, D to E to F in the weekly chart just says to me, uh, be a little careful. I think it's starting to really repair a tremendous amount of damage going from 176 in November. Actually, it was like 3,000 or what it was up in the uh, just huge numbers, and then it got split 10 for one, something crazy like that. Dropped all the way to the 20s, 23. We had it actually for a very brief period, don't have it now, unfortunately, but it's done well. And I think and it just needs a little digestive sideways action more than anything else. Uh, DDD is 3D systems, one that we've already we had fantastic gains once upon a time. This haven't been back in ages. Yep, it made a GCSC. I just didn't like the pattern. I wanted it the other day. It would have been a very nice quick mover going from the 9s to the 11s. That's a big percentage gain. I didn't feel I could trust it. And thank goodness, look at it down today, 4% down 0.42%. Uh, 42 cents at 9.34. Uh, it's it's really struggling. So I've gone through a bunch of things now. I, I did want to show you the DBA, which is something we've had for a couple of years now. Someone asked me the other day, uh, 
Do you have just short-term trading positions? You're often talking about that. No, we have positions that we hold for a long time, uh, as long as we can. We add to them if, if it's a good stock and, and we've taken off some, we'd like to get back into it. Uh, this is the DBA. We've got it from the 13s. It hit 23 once upon a time, pulled back sharply into the 18s. Now it's a 22, double topping-ish. Uh, 22.14 was the high today. 22.13 was the high um, from... Uh, about three weeks ago, and this now I have no choice but to say because it never took out the starting position uh, from the 20 low from the 20 area. This gets an alternate count. It's always all this you've done your left side price time uh, match. Look, look at that. I put that in there from that little candle right there from the left side to the right side, did it to the day. Now, the very quick D to leg E, and not very much higher than D and E, says, oh, yeah, that, that's the grains. The grains were acting very well. Maybe now they have a little bit of a pullback. So that's the DB Agricultural Fund. Um, uh, we haven't had an extra trade in it for a little while, but I'm looking at it. I'm, this is going to the inflationary aspect. So if the grains continue to rally, and just let me do this for a moment. Here's wheat. Does wheat always say that? It's the nine period move, a uh, two hundred period moving average, back at peak E in June and pulls back sharply from the seven seven sixties down to the uh, six uh, six seventeen ish area, bounces now very quickly, and that I've got as a gray leg B because the MACD has crossed positive, the nine just turned up, and the stochastic though is still weak. So I haven't got a full confirmation of a buy signal, but this is still that cup formation. And the cup formation says you can go to the back to the top, and that's where you've got to watch out because when it gets just under, right on, or just above the previous high, that's when it can start to stall. So it has improved a lot in the daily, the weekly, and the monthly still looks very poor. Looking at corn. Uh, now I'm looking at soybeans. This is a soybean continuous contract. I've got this as a leg E, possibly a peak E. All the technicals are good. Stochastics at 89%. The monthly chart, uh, sorry, the week, when this changes, it gets smoothed out. So the letters you see here are absolutely perfect for the price, but it's not automated. I do it by hand. So it's a little, the two inches above where they should be. Um, but yeah, you've got leg B in the weekly chart. So soybeans acting very nicely. New recovery high in the monthly chart. And if you're looking at corn, and I'm just saying, there's a chance that the inflation isn't quite going to go away, that there's still some inflation there. We have seen a decrease, certainly with crude oil coming down, etc. But in the grains, you've had grains holding very nicely. Uh, the, weekly, the weekly chart has got a good move. It really needs to get from the 537 uh, level it's at right now into the 578 to 586 area to say, hey, now I can at least attempt to get to the 608 continuous contract high that was made back in June. Uh, but in the meantime, it is acting quite nicely, but it's in a rectangle formation. Let me drop this rectangle. I've drawn it before, but it's moved. There it is. There's a rectangle formation. So I just wanted to show you, they also have sh uh, sugar. Sugar is trading up. It's in leg D, a very quick peak A, peak B, peak C, leg D. And the monthly chart, peak C1, C2, C3, it should see a move. Sugar should see a move towards the 20, 25, 80, 26, 30 area over the coming three to five weeks. That's the way I'm looking at it right now. But if that's going to do that, 23 is really important, shorter term support that it needs to hold. Okay. Another, I don't, I'm not sure. I'm going to try to see if I uh, – I did not. I'll do it in the next – as we come out of the next break – I'll go to my emails. I didn't want to do that now, just in case it messes up something. Uh, everything's working okay right now. Don't want to jinx it. So NG is natural gas. Oops, natural gas. Put it in over here. So for us, for subscribe to the opening call, uh, we're looking. We got some really good positions, and now we, we've taken profit, nice profits in some of them. Um, still keeping core positions and we want to add to those because they are in the area, the sweet spot area but at the same time there are areas that we missed stocks that we missed, even Bank of America that I missed, I could have gotten many times 
I, I needed to see some proof of the pudding that it's got sustainability. I don't want just a quick pop up, but we'll we'll look at certain stocks over the coming week and really of good opportunities coming. Natural gas. This is a nice move now. Turn into a cup and ladle. Not one of my favorite patterns, but it could give you another retest. I think natural gas is starting to improve. I think within another four weeks, we might see natural gas doing something very different rather than just the sideways move. I'll be back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. But I just needed to know uh, where we are. Yeah, so let me do this. We're looking at the... So I want you to do this quickly, just to show you. Within the context of where we are in the S&P, we're now down 15. Uh, it feels like, oh, my God, now we're pulling back, we're pulling back. If you look at the technicals, you can't get too excited here. You could, if you want to do, if anybody started a maybe a very short-term short position, perfect, because you know exactly where you want to cover. But even covering says it could only make a fraction, it might make a fraction on your high and then start down again. But this is the area where I'm looking at the doji candle saying at 4578.43 yesterday, 
a penny above that says, uh oh, be careful, because all the technicals are good. You get these waves of buying coming in, you get the waves of selling coming in, but the buyers are really overpowering the uh, the seller. So I'm going to make this very clear as far as I'm concerned. Dow is still showing strength. I would not be surprised if it starts to slide a little bit towards the close, but you've got this divergence, and you've got the divergence which says Dow is doing well because of a couple of stocks. The clue for me is that the semiconductors are now deeper. Now they're down four at 154.42. I believe that that's a signal to say we've started some kind of a digestive phase, and we'll see. Maybe the XLF does not support over the next few days, but I think that this is going to be the area where some money starts to come in. So we've got this fluctuation between uh, what has been really working well, very strongly. I mean, look at the IAI, which is the iShares Broker Dealer Index made a peak C. If there's no new high today, you can have just a fractional new high. Then I think it too starts a digestive phase. You've had a fabulous move in the brokers. And that says the public is back in the market. That's the way I'm reading this for a while now. That it, it just seems to me you've got stocks like a Schwab being absolutely fabulous. So I'm not sure if I've got the uh, music. Uh, Eric. Eric.